Welcome to the SMART FY 2021 Support for the Adam Walsh Act Implementation Grant Program Application Guidance. Hi, my name is Kendall Ehrlich, and I am the Director of the SMART Office, which is the Sex Offender Sentencing, Monitoring, Apprehending, Registering, and Tracking Office. This webinar will provide guidance for potential applicants for the Fiscal Year 2021 Adam Walsh Act Implementation Grant Program Solicitation. As you may know, the Adam Walsh Act was enacted in 2006. Title I of the Act lays out the requirements of the Sex Offender Registration and Notification Act, known as SORNA. SMART has implemented 18 states, four territories, and some 136 tribes, with many of the remaining jurisdictions actively working toward implementation. As we continue to implement SORNA, we are also moving toward maintaining SORNA requirements and best practices, as well as incorporating newer requirements such as the 21-day international travel notification requirement codified by the International Megan's Law. We hope your jurisdiction will use these AWA funds to increase and improve maintenance and sustainability of your program as well as to enhance training and support of local, regional, and tribal efforts within your jurisdictions. Training your staff is vital to information sharing and continued success of implemented sex offender registration and notification systems. This year, the AWA solicitation is open to SORNA jurisdictions, state, territories, District of Columbia, and federally recognized SORNA tribes. At this time, I will turn the webinar over to the very capable Allison Turkel, SMART Supervisory Program Grants Manager, and Stephanie Kerrig, SMART Senior Policy Advisor, for guidance on the FY21 Adam Walsh Act Implementation Grant Program. Have a great webinar, and thank you for joining. My name is Stephanie Kerrig, and I am a Senior Policy Advisor at the SMART Office. Hi, everybody. This is Allison Turkel. I'm a supervisory program manager overseeing our grants program in the SMART office. Thank you for joining us and listening to this webinar. In this webinar, we will address the requirements of the Adam Walsh Act, or AWA, particularly Title I of the Adam Walsh Act, which is the Sex Offender Registration and Notification Act, or SORTA. We will discuss eligibility to apply for the AWA Implementation Grant information about the award and its timeline, and the goals, objectives, and deliverables of the Adam Walsh Act Implementation Grant Program. We will also discuss the process of preparing an application for the grant. The SMART Office, through the AWA Implementation Grant and other activities, assists jurisdictions with developing and enhancing programs designed to implement the requirements of SORNA. SORTA sets forth a comprehensive set of standards for the registration and notification of convicted sex offenders. It revised prior federal laws on sex offender registration and notification and, in so doing, closed gaps and loopholes that existed under those laws. Under SORTA, jurisdictions are required to maintain a sex offender registration and notification system that captures each registrable offender who resides works, or attend school in the jurisdiction. SORNA went beyond prior federal laws by expanding the number of sex offenses that must be captured by registration jurisdictions. And perhaps most importantly, SORNA expanded the definition of jurisdiction to include federally recognized Indian tribes, of whom most have elected to stand up their own registration and notification systems. The goals, objectives, and deliverables of the AWA Implementation Grant center around achieving substantial implementation of SORNA, maintaining and enhancing SORNA implementation, and sustaining a SORNA-compliant registration and notification system. Now we're going to talk about award information. You can apply for a grant that's up to $400,000. The period of performance for these grants is 36 months. You'll be able to begin if you're a successful applicant working on your new award, October 1st, 2021. You'll be notified no later than September 30th, 2021. Now, most importantly for this year, there is a new process. As many of you know, we have a new Just Grant system, and so the application process will involve two pieces of applying. 
The first will be to register and submit your SF-424 and your SF-LLL in grants.gov. And you must submit that no later than February 1st, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. Once you have done that, you should go ahead and go and start putting the whole rest of your application into Just Grants. That is due February 16th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. We recommend, as we always do, that you engage in these activities well prior to the due dates so that you do not exclude yourself from applying for this grant, and especially since we are in a new system. So please make sure that you hit those two. You must first apply in grants.gov, and then once you do those two pieces, the whole rest of your application must be submitted in just grants. Eligible applicants to apply for an Adam Walsh Act grant are the SORNA jurisdictions, which include the states, the District of Columbia, principal United States territories, and eligible federally recognized Indian tribes. The SORNA activities and strategies that the AWA grant could be used to develop or enhance are the items listed here. If you have any questions about possible strategies and activities during the application process, please contact our office. For states that have SORNA tribal jurisdictions, the state may apply for funding to enhance their collaboration with those jurisdictions. For example, the state may apply to support its efforts to provide the tribes with access to NCIC and SOAR. In addition, to the extent that the state is carrying out the registration and notification functions for a tribe, regardless of whether that tribe is a SORNA tribal jurisdiction, the state may apply for funding to support those activities. An application to fund a collaborative approach or project must include supporting documentation, such as an interagency agreement, a memorandum of understanding, or a letter of cooperation that demonstrates the collaborative endeavor from each member SORNA jurisdiction involved in the collaboration. Likewise, to the extent that the state is carrying out the registration and notification functions for a tribe, the state should include a letter of support or cooperation and or a MOU that indicates that the local jurisdiction or tribe is in agreement with and supportive of the proposed activities. Now, we're going to move on to preparing an application. There's certain weight that is given to each piece that you have to apply for. So, what does that mean? It means that all of your application should be well done and thorough and provide as much information as possible, but just so you have an understanding of what should be included in that and what weighting will be given to it by uh, the reviewer of your application. You need to give a description of the issue at hand. You need to clearly state how the proposed activities are responsive to any unmet implementation requirements identified in your most recent SORNA Substantial Implementation Review. Uh, in plain language, discuss your status related to substantial implementation of SORNA, including any needs identified that you had to have in order to substantially implement or if you have been found to have substantially implemented SORNA to maintain implementation of your SORNA status. You should provide current data on the number of offenders that you have registered in your jurisdiction. Now, if you have not substantially implemented yet and you're working towards it, then obviously you would talk about that, how, what you are doing to implement, what your challenges are, uh, what your obstacles may or may not be, and how you would use this funding to overcome those. Next, there's the biggest piece, which is 30%. You can see that on the slide itself. It actually says it in the actual solicitation the project design and implementation section. You should outline there how your proposed project will move your jurisdictions closer to substantially implement SORNA or enhance your ongoing SORNA compliance and help to sustain the efficacy and viability of the jurisdiction sex offender registration and notification program. You need to specifically identify each SORNA requirement that will be implemented or enhanced as a result of this proposed project must clearly describe your goals, objectives, and deliverables. These must be specific, 
measurable, realistic, and time limited. The next is your capabilities and competencies. That takes up 25% of the review. Please describe the management structure and staffing of the project. Define the roles, responsibilities of key organizational, functional components and personnel. Discuss the relationship with the Sex Offender Registration Office in your jurisdiction. Describe the experience and the capacity of existing proposed grants management staff who will be responsible for the successful management of this federal grant award and attach position descriptions and or resumes for that key personnel. Next is that plan to collect data required for the solicitation's performance measures. You should describe the process for measuring program performance, identify who will collect the data, who is responsible for the performance measurements, and how the information will be used to guide and evaluate the program's impact. Applicants should identify and describe both the outputs and outcomes they anticipate as a result of their proposed implementation strategy and a process for measuring them. Do be advised there also has been a change to this section, and we will be collecting a little bit more specific things in your performance measures when that time comes for you to collect that. So make sure you have a good plan and you let us know what it is for how you're going to collect that data. Next is the budget, and this is 10%. There is no match required for an Adam Walsh Act grant. You must align your application with the budget categories that are provided in the Office of Justice Program's budget detail worksheet. Please follow the directions on where to locate that budget detail worksheet as well. It has to correspond with your proposed goals, objectives, and deliverables. These things that you're applying for must be necessary and reasonable for the SORNA project activities, and you must maximize cost effectiveness. Your indirect rate, if you have one, must match your unexpired indirect cost rate agreement, which is an attachment that you will upload, or documentation that you will not be using in IDC. If prior year's indirect cost rate is submitted, indirect costs will be withheld into a new signed agreement is submitted via a grant adjustment notice. Please also be sure within this budget that it's not just numbers, but that you describe each section, that you only put the information for three years. It's a three-year project, so we shouldn't find anything in year four or five, and that you are adequately describing each part of that budget. Now we're going to continue that review criteria. We want to look at the plan for SORNA sustainability which counts for 5%, you need to discuss how the proposed project will reduce the jurisdiction's long-term costs in the registry operation and maintenance, discuss how the program will continue to operate beyond the grant award period, and if personnel costs are supported by grant funds, include how these positions will be maintained beyond the grant award period. Basically, the idea with sustainability is that it's really good to have grant funds, and we hope to always be able to uh, have a solicitation for folks to apply to it, but of course that's an unknown. There are some other required items that counts for 5%. Your project abstract, which is a brief uh, description, it's described in the solicitation. Your project timeline, which is very important. Your position descriptions, resumes, and an organizational chart. And if this applies to you, any MOUs, memorandums of understanding or agreement, your indirect cost rate agreement is discussed and a tribal authorizing resolution. For tribes that are applying, you probably are familiar with this when applying for a federal grant. We will require that you have, uh, one, the authorization saying that you're implementing SORNA, as well as a tribal authorizing resolution saying that you have um, tribal leadership clearance to apply for this funding opportunity. Next, we're going to talk about uh, procurement contracts. If your application, including your budget, identifies any proposed non-competitive agreements that are or may be considered procurement contracts rather than subawards for purposes of federal grants administrative requirements, the applicant also must list the entities with which the applicant proposes to contract. OJP offers a lot of uh, information about that, subawards and procurement contracts through um, OJP uh, grants. Information, we'll have that at the very bottom. There's a couple of resources 
uh, at the bottom of this PowerPoint, so we strongly recommend that you review those types of things if you would have a subcontract and that you understand who it is that you have to include. You must also have this separate sheet that's until, entitled Proposed Non-Competitive Procurement Contracts. And there it gives you the application resource guide. That application resource guide is mentioned throughout this PowerPoint. It is mentioned uh, throughout the solicitation itself, and it is really a source of information. So if you get stymied at any part, I would start there, and then you can reach out to us or to the other resources provided at the end of this PowerPoint. Also note, any proposed subawards must be approved by the SMART office. We may consider administrative priorities, among other factors, in determining whether to approve any such subaward. So let's talk about attachments. Uh, for all of your attachments, please make sure that you give a clear descriptive file name for them so that the people reviewing your application can find them easily. They're not just looking at yours. An example would be if you are attaching your abstract, please title it abstract, just so that someone doesn't have to figure out what it is that you have submitted. Your standard form 424, which is submitted in that first part of your application, must include the legal agency name, the legal address, the name of the authorized representative, for example, your executive director or the tribal leader. Please do not put as authorized rep uh, the person who wrote the grant or the person who's going to be managing the grant. This will delay you being able to access funding if you uh, do receive this award. Your financial capability questionnaire that has been completed within the past two years, you can attach uh, one that is older or you'll be directed on how to complete a new one. Your disclosure of pending applications, and you'll see more information about that within the solicitation. And disclosure of your lobbying activities, which is that LLL form, which you must submit with your 424 in the first part of your application in grants.gov. Be sure, as we've mentioned, to include any position descriptions and our resumes for key personnel. It is important to have a timeline and make sure it's realistic. Now, of course, you can make adjustments as you go on, but how are you going to accomplish what it is you've applied for within that 36-month period of the award? Your current indirect cost agreement, or IDC, or documentation indicating that you don't use and will not be using an IDC for this award. Your current tribal authorizing resolution, if it's applicable to you, that would include two. One which would be that you have an authorizing resolution that allows you to apply for this award, and the other that you have opted in to implement SORNA. Documentation of any anticipated benefit to federally designated qualified opportunity zones. This is listed on page nine of the solicitation. This is uh, up to you if you want to apply for this or if you qualify. It does give uh, some degree of priority, as does the next thing, the documentation of rural challenge. If it's applicable to you, that information is also on page nine of the solicitation. Just a note here, if you were to receive the award, uh, both the programmatic and financial contacts are required to complete the DOJ grants financial management training within 120 days of the award. There is some allowance if you've taken it within a certain period of time, and that information will be shared with you. But again, you'd have to provide proof that you have completed that training. So let's talk about the generally allowable activities that you could use this funding for so that you will, in your application, make sure that you're applying for things that we, in fact, can fund. There are limitations on what can be funded with this uh, money that comes actually from the statute, and then, of course, there are things that are guided by the DOJ financial guide, also something you should have next to you while you're applying for this uh, grant award. Generally allowable activities include personnel, the fringe, and equipment that includes digital fingerprint and palm print technology, DNA collection, storage, and security, fingerprint identification readers, vehicle purchases. This is one of those things that is really reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. You must provide a justification and a cost analysis for purchase versus a lease that must be attached in your application. Any supplies that include computers, scanners, printers, and copiers, we will need a justification that links that to your sex offender registration activities. That is what this grant money can be used for. Any registration-related equipment, for example, cameras, kiosks, radios, tablets. And you can apply also for general office supplies, printing and educational materials, again, as long as they are related to your SORNA implementation 
or notif notification activities for the community. General allowable activities and costs include travel, and hopefully we will all be back uh, within a short period of time and certainly by the time that these awards are made so that we can actually uh, have grantees and ourselves engaged in travel. So it's important uh, there may be some makeup in this award period of time to actually get travel done. Your travel f application for funding can include applicants uh, it should put this in their budget for travel lodging expenses for one person to participate in a smart sponsored training event um, it'll be a location to be determined. We always tell people to use Washington, D.C. as their location. If you need to calculate the amount of money, you should put in for a minimum of three days and two nights for at least one representative from your program and up to three participants maximum for at least one workshop event. Training seminars or conferences that are sort of related to include officer safety topics, uh, any technical assistance meetings, which we will hopefully be able to hold throughout the year. For implemented jurisdictions, any jurisdiction-wide trainings and conferences related to sex offender uh, registration and management. SORNA working group related travel. Mileage, local travel to attend meetings, perform verification checks, et cetera, using uh, personal or jurisdiction vehicles. Mileage logs are required as part of the grant documentation. It is not allowable to use these grant funds for gas and fuel costs except with approved rental cars or for vehicle maintenance. All proposed travel costs must align with GSA travel guidelines, another one of those uh, sites you should have up on your computer while applying, rental cars. We must have prior approval from the SMART grant manager in every instance. So you could put it in your grant application that it's something that you will need. Uh, you may be granted that, but alas, you will still need specific uh, approval once and if you become an actual awardee of this grant. Other generally allowable activities and costs include subawards. You may make subawards to other entities who are responsible for your SORNA related activities. Contracts can be made for the following items, which I spoke about earlier, but here's some specifics where you might use a contract. Is a vehicle lease agreement, you must provide a justification and cost analysis on that lease versus purchase, as mentioned earlier. Professional services and consultants, for example, IT, attorneys, compliance specialists. Any proposed consulting activities should not duplicate services that are available from the SMART funded resources. For example, we do have a training and technical assistance provider uh, that provides training and technical assistance across a number of topics relevant to you. You must check with us prior to that. There must be something unique that you would use our grant funds for so that we're not duplicating services. Must use the established agency guidelines for your competitive procurement process. Additional documentation is required in applications for sole source vendor agreements that are over $250,000. OJP maximum daily consulting rate is $650 a day or $81.25 an hour. Waiver is required from OJP's Assistant Attorney General for any rate over this cap, and additional documentation is required at time of the application. Also, please be advised that that $650 is a maximum, so you still need to justify why you, why you would be paying the $650, who is the person who is qualified to receive that maximum amount of money, and provide documentation as to that. Generally allowable activities include, that are not included above, include rental space for your office space or meeting event spaces related to uh, your SORNA program, any software including upgrades, licenses or subscriptions, your utilities for your offices including internet access, telephone services, officer identification and visibility materials, and conference registration fees, again, to relevant conferences that are useful for uh, working with sex offenders. What are the unallowable, specifically unallowable activities and costs? No construction can be done with AWA funding. You cannot pay for any food and or beverages with this funding. No gift cards or prepaid phone cards may be purchased. No stipends may be paid out out of this award funding. Gasoline, fuel, and vehicle maintenance repairs is not allowable. Only mileage reimbursement is allowable. 
GSA mileage rates are taken into account uh, and basic wear and tear on vehicles. Again, check that GSA guidelines. And you cannot pay for insurance for the vehicles. Even if you're allowed to purchase or lease a vehicle, you cannot use that for uh, the insurance payments for that. How do you apply? Again, it's a new two-step process. Applicants must register with the grants.gov and submit the SF-424 and the SFLLL no later than February 1st, 2021 by 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. That SFLLL, by the way, in case you were wondering, is the lobbying form uh, that references uh, how you'll not use grant funds for lobbying purposes. Uh, number two, after you do that, you then can move on and you must submit the entire rest of your application no later than February 16th, 2021, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time into Just Grants. Use the solicitation checklist at the end of the solicitation to verify that you have included all the required application elements. Submit the full application at least 72 hours prior to application due date, and you can find OJ forms at ojp.gov slash funding slash apply slash forms dot htm. I would strongly advise that you do this ahead of time because it is a new process. There may be glitches. You will not be the only ones applying for grants at this time. These systems and the help uh, that is provided at the end will also be up and running. However, there'll be many other solicitations uh, that folks are putting in applications for. And we want to make sure that you have the best help available to make sure you get it done smoothly and clearly. How to apply continued. So go, how do you find this solicitation? Hopefully you have it in front of you during this webinar, but you can search for the funding opportunity on grants.gov. The CFDA number is 16.750, and it's titled Support for Adam Walshack Implementation Grant Program. Grants.gov has an opportunity number, and you can see that there in front of you in red, which will be important to make sure you're applying to the right solicitation. If it's your first time applying, it would be really probably a good idea to go to our website um, and take a look and see the types of projects that have been funded in the past uh, so that you can put in the best application that you have available. The technical support for Grants.gov is listed on this slide. Uh, for technical assistance, for those first two documents, you will be able to find assistance both through a toll-free number, a direct number, a uh, email address. The customer support line for grants.gov operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week, except for federal holidays. And they also have a lot of resources on their website that can help you also in making applications. So I encourage you to have that readily available. Uh, Just Grants also has technical support um, that will, you will need because there are going to be new ways that you are uploading information into Just Grants. Just Grants, there is some advantage to it. It is going to hopefully take some of the information and put it down through different parts of your application that you won't have to redo it, but it will be a new process for those of you who have been applying for years for funding from the SMART office. So we highly encourage you to give it ample time and to, again, take down this information. They have a toll-free number. They have a web page. They also have guidance that can help you run through it yourself. They have shorter hours. Just Grant Support operates from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Saturday, Sunday, and federal holidays. So make sure you take good note of that as well. Here is a list of resources and tools available to all registration jurisdictions. SMART.gov is the SMART Office's official website and includes several tools to assist jurisdictions in their efforts to implement SORNA, including a checklist and the other items listed here. The Drew Shadeen National Sex Offender Public Website, or NSOPW.gov, is a public website that enables the public to simultaneously search all registration jurisdictions' public registry websites. The SORTA Exchange Portal is a web-based tool that the SMART Office created. The portal facilitates various communications between registration jurisdictions, most notably notifications between jurisdictions regarding sex offender relocation. 
The Sex Offender Registry Tool, or SORT, provides local registration agencies with their own specialized public sex offender registry website and can function as the state-level administrative registry system. The Sex Offender Management Assessment and Planning Initiative, or SAMAPI, is a large-scale project designed to assess the state of research and practice in sex offender management. There are also many resources and tools that our office has designed specifically for the tribal jurisdiction. The Tribal and Territory Sex Offender Registry System, or TSORS, is the tribal counterpart to SORT, functioning as the jurisdiction level registry system. It also includes a customizable public website. The Tribal Access Program is a Department of Justice program that supports tribes in analyzing their needs for national crime information, and it helps to provide appropriate solutions, including a biometric biographic computer workstation with capabilities to process finger and palm prints, taking mugshots, and submitting records to national databases, and accessing CEGIS systems, such as NSOR, for criminal and civil purposes. The Model Tribal Code assists tribes in developing or updating existing sex offender registration legislation to meet SORNA requirements. The Guide on SORNA Implementation in Indian Country provides registry personnel with information needed to assist in efforts towards implementing SORNA. SORNA tribal training and technical assistance is also available to assist tribes in these efforts. If you have any further questions, please reference the contact information in the solicitation. If your questions are more general, please contact the SMART office at the information you see here. Thank you very much for attending this webinar.